All right, today I'm gonna to show you how to install Milmax hot swap sockets into a regular PCB. So first I'll tell you about the different types of hot swap sockets. So first here, we've got a kale hot swap socket. Sometimes I get questions about whether you can install these into a PCB and uh, the answer is clearly no because uh, here you've got these two circular bits in here that definitely don't fit into the PCB here. Um, in order for those hot swap sockets to work, you'll need a specialized PCB that already has these larger holes in order to stick the kale hot swap socket on. So really, the PCB has to be designed around the kale hot swap socket. And chances are, if uh, the PCB has already been designed for this hot swap socket, it'll already have the hot swap sockets pre-soldered on. Um, this one is one of those DIY keyboards with the Pro Micro controller on there. So this will have um, the slots for you to do it yourself. But for the most part, uh, any PCB that I sell here at QBO is not going to have those um, hot swap sockets um, supported on these PCBs. So I'll tell you about these three different Milmax hot swap sockets that we've got. So this gold one here is the 7305. Here is the 0305. And this is a new one. This one is a 3305. So these two are the most common ones that you'll find um, at uh, the st any store that sells Milmax sockets. So I'll tell you about the differences for all three of them. So for this one, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I'll do another video that shows up a uh, more close-up view using a microscope. But here, the 7305, uh, this is a gold version of that. Uh, and what it features is, you can see this leg is shorter, so what I mean by shorter is when you stick it in through the PCB, right here, not much of the leg is going to pop through the other side of the PCB. Uh, that's kind of the downside of using the 7305, it's a lot harder to solder. Uh, but the benefit is, on the top side of the PCB, there's a lot less that's showing up above the top of the PCB. Uh, for the most part, you don't need um, you know the the extra difference between this 0305, which has a um, larger amount of socket sticking above the PCB, because for most cases um, you'll be fine with the the extra length on top of the PCB and the longer tail at the bottom. So this, uh, like I said, with the 0305, once you stick it in, pops up a little bit more on the piece to be here, uh, and the tail sticks out a little bit more, and that will make it actually easier to solder for you. Now this last one, the 3305, um, this is specifically designed for keyboards. Uh, Milmax has a, a page about it on their website. And uh, this is a new thing. Uh, it's actually still more expensive than either these two, the 7305 and the 0305. So um, the benefit being is you get the longer tail, so you get more room to solder with, but you also have a lot thinner amount of socket that sticks out above the PCB. So um, it's the best of both worlds with the 7305 and the 0305. But the price, yeah, it's not there yet. So um, in terms of recommendations, if you don't have any kind of issues with uh, case fitment, then go with the 0305. If you really need that thinner profile, then you can go with the 7305 and the fact that it's gold plated. Um, I mean, it's really up to you for the most part. Uh, I would stick with 0305. So now, anyway, I'll show you how to get these installed. 
So there's two ways to install these. So first way is to manually stick it into the PCB like this. It can be a little bit tricky. Tape it down. Well, sometimes you'll need to tape it on. Flip it over, solder it on. Um, I don't really like doing it that way, especially for these pads that are MX and Alps compatible. For MX, yeah, you can do it that way, but for MX Alps, um, you've got this larger oval hole here, and if you're trying to do it loose by hand, um, it's gonna jiggle around and be harder to align in there. So what I do is I'll take a switch here, make sure your legs are straight on it, take a pair of tweezers, stick them on here, turn on my soldering iron here, and in terms of soldering iron tip, I'll take the thinnest one that I've got here with the pointiest tip. Gonna tin tip real quick here. All right, so I've got the sockets on here. Gonna place the switch with the sockets onto the PCB. Flip the PCB over. And now the key is we want to heat the pad and the socket at the same time. So I'm heating the pad and the socket. Heating it for a few seconds here. I'll touch a little bit of the solder to the tip here and then afterwards let the solder flow around the pad. So once again, heat up the pad and the socket simultaneously for a few seconds, like maybe like five seconds or so. Touch the solder a little bit to the tip, and then once it's flowing, you can kind of spread it to the rest of the pad. Uh, if you're using the 7305s like I did just here, make sure you're very careful not to get the solder into the socket. Then once you're done, just pull the switch out. And there you go. I'll do the same for the, these other two. Now what I usually do is, I like to do a whole row at once, so I'll take six of these switches at once, load them up with sockets, and then insert them on top of the PCB. So here we go, 0305 here. I'm gonna stick that onto the PCB, and I'll stick another one on, stick the 3305 onto the PCB here. There we go. Make sure you push the switches in all the way so the sockets sit as flush as possible to the PCB. And now I'm gonna do the same process here. Heat it up for about five seconds. And then let the solder flow around the pad. Same here. And here I'm also using very thin solder as well. So this is, um, I believe, either 0 0.02 inch diameter solder, I think. It's uh, the one I normally use for SMD soldering as opposed to switches. For switches, I use a thicker diameter core here. Now, you can still use a thicker diameter core. It's a little bit tougher to work with, um, but I'll show you how it's done here. So once again, heating it up. Touch a little bit to the tip of the iron, then afterwards move it to the rest of the pad. And there you go. That's how you solder Momax sockets to the board. Now, one last thing I wanted to point out is the different diameters, or different, um, I guess, different profile on top of the PCB. So if I bring it close here, show you right there. So here is the 7305. You'll see how much pops up above the PCB. And then here, the 0305 pops up a little bit more. And then the 3305, that's uh, lower than the 7305 by a little bit. Um, not too much, but uh, still slightly noticeable. Okay, so the last bit I'm going to show you here is what happens if 
uh, you didn't put the socket all the way into the PCB. So I'll show you right here as an example. If you look right here, these two, they're not fully flush on top of the PCB. This could happen if uh, you didn't push the switch all the way in while you had the sockets on them. So it's a really easy fix for that. Uh, first thing you want to do is just get your iron. Uh, don't load it up with solar or anything and clean it off as best as you can. Because basically we don't want to get any solder in the socket as we're going to reheat it and uh, stick it deeper into the, to the PCB. So just put your tip in like that, heat it up and then push it in. Same here. Stick that on, heat it up a little bit and push it down. So take a look at that. Now those sockets are flush with the PCB. So there you have it. That's how you solder Milmax sockets to a PCB. Hope this helps. Uh, if you've got any questions, just ask me in the comments, send me a DM, whatever. So hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you later.